Hey guys, Brock Schild here. In this video, I wanted to show you the circuit I have in BlackRock Depths, where I utilize my three different characters on three different accounts, using of course no multiboxing software at all, strictly each character on a different screen as I have three monitors, where I'm able to essentially farm BlackRock Depths at the highest level I can. So as you just saw, we go, went ahead and used our Shadow Forge key to open these first two doors so we can get started on some of the more difficult mobs inside this entryway here. For those who are unfamiliar, the route up there leads to the arena, the arena uh, portion of the dungeon, and the upper, the top left area you saw leads to the lava jump that I've covered in some of my Blackrock Depths Emperor Tri videos where I was trying to farm iron foe. So here you see the same standard stuff. Round them up, bring them around the corner after I bubble. Heal myself up, top myself off, and go ahead and start the, uh, the healing in AoE. Here you'll notice both the importance of my healer Denarius, who's healing over time, um, as well as the, the power of his, I believe, rank 11 healing touch really shows through here as he's able to keep my health bar topped off. And then my mage Parminion outputs uh, each second of Blizzard is 170 plus damage to each of the mobs there. Um, so that's a lot of AoE damage that adds up over time. And that combination of Brock Shield being able to hold the aggro and take the damage, along with Denarius healing, and of course Parminion doing his damage, uh, that completes the pulse. On this second pull in the inner area, I like to avoid the left hand side fire guard. They're typically fire guards in those pack to the right and simply go with these melee monsters. The reason for that is because for all of us classes who can tank, we have no inherent um, immunity to magical damage, but through our greater armor, we are able to resist physical damage at greater levels. So I don't like testing fate going after all the elementals. So for that reason, I only push for the melee mobs when my blessing, or excuse me, my divine shield is down. These physical mobs can output a lot of damage, but typically using the Sacred Shield ability, the Holy Shield, um, as well as the higher armor from being a plate-wearing paladin, um, usually that should be enough to mitigate enough damage that you can survive the pulls without a bubble. You'll see more of what I'm talking about with the elementals in some of the later pulls where um, after we've cleared up what is quote unquote the easier area as please do not think that you could just walk in with three characters and do this even if you're on three different accounts it does take a lot of coordination and practice to get to this point um, but with that said when we get to some of the higher level parts of the instance uh, where there are more fire guards in bulk uh, that's when you'll see me try and you know sidestep them back and make sure i take a few steps back so they don't just um, take me out basically as if you can have four or five of them hit you with a fireball worth 600 uh, there's just not enough health on Brock shield as I'm not a warrior tank that can now have you know 10,000 health uh, in next Ramus gear um, I I think Brock shield only has like 4100 health here and his mana pool is strong I think his mana pool is at 5800 or something and which you'll see most of these pulls I've expent all my mana um, but with the enhanced level of the fire guards in the upper more parts of the dungeon, it does become more difficult as their maximum output of damage is much greater than these um, bloodhounds and uh, anvil ridge guardsmen, overseers, wardens, etc. I like to take one more pull and one pull, excuse me, in this outer area before finishing up the more difficult inner because I'm waiting for my divine shield to come up. 
So you'll see here on the bars that my Shift M and Shift 3 are both on cooldown, my Divine Shield and uh, Blessing of Protection. In those instances, I like to take these lower level melee mobs as a breather in between the more difficult higher level mobs. At this point, we'll gather up the loot and go ahead back in to finish off the last pull of the inner area. One thing that I love about Blackrock Depths is, um, as you can see here, the pulls are going pretty smoothly. Um, it's a dungeon where if you have a party of five, you can really push the limits of how much you want to AoE because you have some mobs that are the level of the highest, like Zulfarak mobs, for example. And then you have other mobs that are also the level of the Stratholme mobs, for example. So you get a wide range of variance in terms of how hard those mobs are hitting a level 60 character. So for me, I know that when I move into the more difficult hallways with Lord Rokor, that those mobs at level 52, 51 hit harder than these mobs that are level 49, 48 in the open courtyard. So I'm aware that these mobs here are going to be more challenging than the ones in the open field um, as they are in the higher and more deep parts of the dungeon. So I definitely take the pulls more seriously in here because you can easily get overwhelmed and outrun and, you know, you know overrun, I should say, excuse me. Um, if you pull too many of them and that's just something that you learn with experience over what your own limits are if you are multi-boxing this or say running it with a group ideally so you can have some fun with your friends. In terms of the loot that I see from these circuits I have been very fortunate in some of the epic drops that um, I have seen. I think I've seen probably, um, here you can see Brock Schultz's mana bar spent, so it is good that he spends the mana. You can always replenish it, right? I have seen two edge masters, excuse me, returning back to the loot. Uh, two edge masters hand guards have dropped for me, so was able to sell those for 3,700 gold as of the later stages of Classic when this video has been recorded. So that was a good get considering the marketplace for that gear is fading the closer we get to a potential TBC release announcement. And obviously at that point, we'll see a lot of the items like um, Arcanite crystals and bars. I mean, they just won't be worth anything because people will be preparing for the next expansion. Definitely exciting stuff because I mean, the thought of the Burning Crusade is really exciting for me because I see myself um, utilizing these three characters to try and farm Hellfire Citadel as the way I look at it. If at level 60, I can farm mobs in bulk between 48 and 52, I should be able to at level 70 farm mobs between 58 and 62. So that's what I'm holding on to, is that if the math translates the same way between the expansions, which of course, honestly, I'm not sure of, um, that there is hope that I can farm Hellfire Citadel in mass because the Netherweave, the disenchantments, the, uh, the gold drops, the, the loot is very plentiful uh, when you're farming in Outlands. So that's definitely something that uh, gives me uh, optimism over the results I've seen here and hopefully be able to carry that forwards as we move into the Hopefully, the Burning Crusade, though, is still unannounced as of the recording of this video. Other than the two Edge Masters, um, I have seen other epics like Blood Razor, Lay of Lilies, um, seen uh, quite a few BOE Blues as well. Like I mentioned, um, a lot of a lot of epics have dropped, and they do sell quite well. So that is a good thing because 
I was making a lot of gold when I was doing the SM cath runs. And of course the downside and upside is that, well, the upside is that you get to talk with people. The downside is that you have to coordinate all the summoning of them and making sure that they understand like, hey, we're zoning in, zoning out, etc. And sometimes I forget to call to zone in, which can be unfortunate if you miss half of the dungeon, because then I won't charge as much in case I'm selling the runs or what, whatever it may be. But here it's just dependent on me, which makes it easier in a way. And of course, also more difficult because I mean, these are a lot of mobs, so. I'm grateful for this, combina this combination of characters because even though none of our classes are necessarily the best, for example, paladins are the third best of three tanks. Mages are, I think, the, sec the second or third best DPS. They scale in the game with the the fire. Um, I forget what it's ignite. The ignite fire, uh, that mage ability, uh, it allows you to, of course, scale your top mage uh, at his maximum potential as you go to Nax Remus. He scales very well. And the druid, of course, is the worst healing class in the game. Um, but they each play their roles well, and that makes it a very symbiotic relationship because uh, the druid doesn't hold me back, I think, as a healer because Brock Shield can resurrect. So that means I'm not dependent on his infinite resurrection ability uh, for the other healers. And the fact that I have then a battle res is sometimes helpful if Brock Shield goes down in these situations. Which does happen from time to time if I pull too many mobs. I'm most excited for this combination as we journey towards the Burning Crusade. Uh, the reason being is, even though Paladins still aren't the best tank there, um, we are viable tanks because we have a taunt, our improved toolkit with improved Righteous Fury. Um, those are very nice toolkits to have in hand as um, they allow the Paladin class to hold aggro while sustaining their health on a wide range of mobs. You know, I mean, I remember the WoW Hobbies videos in TBC were revolutionary for the time because he was doing um, big pulls with five people in like uh, the the Nexus area in Shazrath, near Shazrath, um, all those dungeons like Blood Furnace, um, and he he was trying to AOE pull everything. So I'm very interested in seeing what can be done from these three characters because. Druids, in my opinion, were the best healers in the Burning Crusade. Their tree form, in combination with the mechanics of the dungeons, which necessitated moving to dodge bosses, for example, let's take Nilus Aran from Karazhan. Um, he casts his Blast Wave AoE, which necessitates everyone moving to the outside of the room every time he goes, I am Nilus Aran, and he cast his ability and everyone who's on the inside of the room is gone and everyone who's on the outside is safe. And um, so druids are really skilled in those situations and I speak unfortunately from uh, healing as a paladin in those days so that was difficult because you don't want to let your tank die or anything because you can't move and heal at the same time but they can. So it makes it difficult in the sense that gonna have to uh, find another way to try and get the job done and druids i noticed throughout the the entirety of the tbc expansion first class in pvp by virtue of being able to escape all of the snares you know uh, changing out of the different forms and you also get flight form you get a lot of different advantages actually now that i'm thinking about it they really buff the druid especially the healing class for druids uh through their through excuse me no pun intended their tree of life form so that makes me very excited to think about Daenerys' potential. And mages are, again, first class in terms of, I think they still are the best AoE DPS. I'm not sure if warlocks have caught up to them in general as a casting class, but there's still just something very simple about casting Blizzard and then not worrying about what Parmenion is doing because I know that he's just adding so much value just through existing. So it does uh, take a load off uh, Brock Shield.
And here you can see just how well that symbiotic relationship works. Um, in two pulls, we wipe up the entire inner area here. And just like that, it's, it'll be time to loot in no time. Unfortunately, no epics dropped on this run, so I'll have to get rid of any suspense there. But it does happen, so that's nice. I've come to very much enjoy this BRD circuit. The relaxing and simplistic nature of doing the same thing over and over that gets me the result I want is enjoyable uh, first and foremost both in real life um, as well as in video games. Um, for example, like this is very different than PvP in any game. You know, like you enter a Fortnite battleground or a PUBG battleground or something, you might be, you know, the best player in the world or something, but you're not guaranteed the same winning each time, right? But I look at it this way in terms of like playing um, a player versus environment PvE that it, it really is in my control to just try and do the right thing with these characters. And the number one thing I actually tell myself is never get cocky reason I say that is because most of the deaths I get are just straight pulling too many mobs. Um, once the number of mobs gets really high, that's when it gets out of my range. And so at that point, it just becomes a slugfest just to try and stay alive. Because for example, I'm not exaggerating, the best pull I've ever had in here, I cleared the entire half of the hallway where Lord Rokar patrols in a single pull. It cost me like Goblin Sapper Charge, Oil of Immolation, Lay on Hands. I barely survived. I mean, there were so many close calls. I was clinging on for, for dear life there. Had I been recording, it would have singularly been a very enjoyable pull. Um, but it was really just unnecessary how I pulled so many mobs. So this might look like a lot of mobs to you. But typically those four packs, three packs, that's the range I like. I mean, once you start to push to five and six, then it becomes a bit of a stretch for me, so that's where I'm like, all right, let me take a step back, slow down, and go back to the fundamentals, and just don't pull too much. In terms of the buffs, you see that I don't actually have any of the elixir of uh, spell power on Brockfield at this point. I traded over the supplies I had to Parminion as it'll be better used in his hands. Um, I also don't have any troll blood elixir left, but I do have some elixir of the sages, elixir of greater defense, elixir of greater agility, elixir of fortitude, oil of immolations, limited invulnerability potions, brilliant wizard oil, um, excuse me, major mana potion you see above that as well in the top right, um, superior uh, in, uh, mana potions. Um, rune cloth bandages and goblin sapper charges along with the lay of lilies uh, potion as well in the event you need that the flower that comes from the lay of lilies on denarius i have the uh, elix uh, the brilliant wizard oil or it's something different the one that is for healing and then in parminion i have the brilliant wizard oil as well as the elixir of frost power as well as the, excuse me, the elixir of spell power, the one that I mentioned earlier. Typically situations like these are the ones that cause the most wipes. In this case, it was only a single dog, the bloodhound that was charging out of file. So it wasn't really a threat. But when you have like sometimes one or two packs that come from the side, and especially if I'm not looking for them, they can jump on Parminion or Denarius and they can cause a lot of problems. 
If it's a single elite, typically I'll sheep it with Parmenion and just keep control of the main pull. But if it's an, like a whole pack, what I'll typically do is I'll shift forward to cast my Blessing of Freedom on Brock Shield. And, excuse me. And run over to where the mobs are, consecrate, draw the aggro, and uh, make sure that we uh, bring the, the mobs down from there. So in this case, you see, uh, again, not pulling or doing too much. Take it nice and slow and steady. Sometimes you do have these mobs reset. Uh, typically, actually, right around this area is where the mobs start to run back. Um, they... There's some sort of pathing there where... They sometimes follow up, but then they don't aggro even when I consecrate. I'm not necessarily sure. Maybe I just missed the consecrate, but right around here, there is uh, some annoyance in the pathing. And same situation here. I'm just hoping this Anvil Rage mob, uh, the Warden, that he just runs into my consecrate because he's a big threat for the healer in the DPS if he gets on him alone. So that's why I just try and, you know, give a give a shimmy over there and see if he'll focus on me I haven't actually tried this style of pull in any other dungeon the reason for that is because these mobs, as you get to the higher levels, they hit exponentially harder. Um, for example, I tried in Dire Mall North, the most difficult Dire Mall, to try and pull some of the elite ogres, and even a three pack of them wiped me out. And I'm certain with more practice I could hold up to maybe a three or four pack, but I'm not even kidding. I'm not sure that you can tank like five of those ogre maulers in a pack because each of them can swipe you for like a thousand at a time and so if it's five thousand dps coming in i actually can't hold up to it because i physically don't have the health even if denarius can somehow output the healing maybe parminium can frost nova them all in all it's the same thing as when i was in a position with jess brockshield sm cath was still the best pound for pound range for me at that point in time because I didn't have the backup that I have now with Tenarius and Parminion at my side. Um, given that, you know, the limiting thing here is still me. I mean, the way I look at it, Brockshield is still not able to, you know, sustain the hits from the highest level mobs when they gather in bulk. And so that becomes difficult considering that, you know, that it's not like, for example, if I run SM Cath now, I can one pull the whole dungeon myself. So. It's like, there's not any value add from having the, you know, Daenerys and Parminion there because it's not like it's bringing me anything new. And so that's the, the good part about finding a range of dungeon that's best for your style of pulling. I say this because Luramel, a druid in my guild, loves power leveling other guildies in Valhalla for free through uh, SM Cath. So what uh, they'll do is they'll uh, take a uh, flame sacks for oil of immolation, for example, um, and other things in order to speed up the process from a druid perspective. And I really like that because they just run the guildies for free so that once the guildies are stronger, you know, everyone's stronger. And so that's like a, a level range that works well for Luramel because as a druid, I can tell you for a fact that I actually haven't even keybound Daenerys's feral or bear form because it is its own learning experience, same as anything else, and I just haven't been able to justify it to myself because this is the style of pulling that I enjoy. 
And as a result of that, it makes me happy to see other people find their own niches in terms of what level group is best for me straight up because it's it's like I really cannot take the hits at from multiple level 60s like that so it's not like I'm just clearing you know one small pack at a time as if we were 560s I like to have more of the mobs on me so that hopefully we can utilize all of the different skills that these three classes can have together And so thinking about what I mean by this combination of skills, you need only look at the buffs and blessings in the top right hand corner for Brock Shield. I mean, Gift of the Wild with 285 armor, and I also believe like it's plus quite a bit to each of your stats. That is quite a bit of uh, bonus to your abilities. In addition to that, you have Thorns, and I have buffed Thorns on Daenerys, of course, which means that I think in reflect damage, I'm actually getting like 42 um, experience, uh, excuse me, 42 uh, reflect damage per hit given to me. So that is quite a bit of damage and reflect uh, as you surround uh, Brock Shield with more and more mobs. And that's one of the things you also saw on my world first SM cap legitimate one pull is that I have buffs from Daenerys along with elixirs nothing unsustainable so just like what you see here uh, but it really does help a lot because you know you think you think 42 damage per hit the mob is getting back i mean you could easily see each mob taking 420 damage of pain just for hitting me and so that's something that you're trying to stack if you can help it while not compromising whatever your your main strategy is i mean for example like why would a tank a warrior why would they choose to go full reflect when they could just go full protection and then count on Parmenion, for example, to do the damage because it doesn't you know, benefit them to take like spell power gear like Brock Shield or something. But speaking of the positives, I mean, some of the more underrated things we'll get to, but the arcane brilliance from Parmenion, all three of my classes are mana using classes. So when you can add 310 mana, um, to your maximum you see there's almost not a, a pull that goes by where brock schultz mana bar isn't expend and that's because i have fully specced into protecting myself you know instead of some of the talent specs you've seen previously and i would be happy to make another talent video showing this spec um i'm really trying to take care of brock schultz ability to mitigate damage first and foremost so that's where that sacred shield holy shield ability comes from holy shield um because in these situations here, you saw I kept taking a few steps back to retreat as those fire guards were closing in. Uh, being able to, you know, wall off those attackers and sustain a few hits with your shield is helpful because even though they're, you know, lower level, it does add up when you bring in the higher level mobs and the paths that can, you know, jump you by surprise on the side. And it does become uh, difficult um, if you're not prepared. Back to the uh, buffs, of course. Um, you see the elixirs are very useful. Uh, in addition to that, one buff I've really enjoyed is the Amplify Magic from uh, Parminion, excuse me. The reason I say that is because uh, Parminion, um, his Amplify Magic, means that I am receiving more healing from Daenerys each pull at the cost of taking slightly more magical damage. And the only time that's even relevant as a negative, of course, is with the Fire Guards. None of the other mobs other than Lord Rokar have any magical dealing abilities. And of course the arena as well, but so the mobs in bulk have the magical dealing abilities. And so for that reason, Amplify Magic is very useful because it's it's sort of a, you know, saying like, I believe that Daenerys' healing is worth more to me than the damage of this one fire guard. And so if you look at it that way, it's a surefire thing, right? But I still feel that way when there are, you know, four or five fire guards because Daenerys's max level healing touch can heal for 4,000 something um, so that uh, that does become quite a bit of positive healing and the way I look at it also the heal over times the regrowth and the rejuvenation they're also benefiting from amplify magic 
And so I remember when I got that spell on Parminion for the first time, I started to think about just how useful, once again, some of these smaller niche spells are in the bigger picture. So that's, you know, just another great tool to have in your toolkit. And it adds up to a, a good symbiotic relationship between these three characters. So this, of course, is the more difficult of the two different um, semi-circle areas that you clear in the initial portion of Blackrock Depths. Um, this is where most of the time, if I wipe, I wipe here. And not because you see I'm particularly threatened, but the mobs can get out of hand, especially with Lord Rokor if you don't time him correctly because he patrols pretty much from here all the way to right near the top of the other half of the semicircle. And so how you deal with him is very important. So I was fortunate that in this situation, I did not have to take him head on with a big pack on me already. And for that reason, I, of course, am the beneficiary of good timing. Um, and I appreciate that fortunate timing, I should say, because Lord Rokor himself isn't a threat. But when you're, you know, if you take a five pack and then Lord Rokor jumps on you at like, and you lose aggro of the pack or Lord Rokor goes sideways or uh, something like that, it becomes difficult because that's actually some of the situations I've had where for some reason you saw I did not start the healing or the AOE immediately because Lord Rokor, I sometimes seem to lose aggro on him a lot. So if you're doing the same style of pulling or you want to emulate this style, Definitely just keep in mind to build aggro first and really prioritize that chain of command um, because what will happen is that taking care of Brock Shield's abilities first and foremost is paramount. Um, he is the center of this pull in the sense that without his ability to withstand this damage, uh, there is no pull. I mean, Daenerys doesn't have the AoE ability of Consecrate. So no matter what he can do as a tank, it's just not as consistent, you know? I mean, a warrior, of course, has a lot of different abilities, like Whirlwind, for example. You can use Force Reactive Disc. Um, you can use um, Cleave, for example. You can spend your rage in different ways such that you can attack multiple mobs. But having played a 60 warrior, it is just not playing not the same as, you know, this style of Paladin. So that's, uh, that's something I definitely try and take my time with especially around these boss level monsters is make sure the aggro's on me before you involve your healer in dps because otherwise it can get out of hand if lord rokor starts charging over to parminion because lord rokor i think is immune to frost nova potentially so and even if it's not i mean how long can it even hold him for and what can also happen is when we talk about okay so lord rokor runs off to the side and you can see that he's charging parminion Brock Shield will be netted, and if I switch over to Blessing of Freedom, I'm immediately taking a lot more strong damage from this bulk of Anvil Rage mobs that are now hitting me very strong, um, because they they, look, they they are tough tough guys, and when you involve them together like that, um, and now I'm netted, I'm running away, I'm not blocking the right way, I don't have Blessing of Sanctuary up, which is the point I wanted to get to, reducing all the melee damage per hit. It really does all add up, and if you're going sideways on these mobs, um, it can be big damage to you. Here you see me backing up because it's like the best thing you do sometimes is just, you know, the way I look at it, it's like sometimes you'll see in the UFC someone gets taken down, right, with one minute left, for example, in the, in the round. Sometimes the best thing to do isn't to try and be a hero. It's just accept that I got taken down and, you know, try and hold the other guy's arms closer to me from that perspective so that I just survive the round. And you know, that's just an example of that I could have been a hero and stood in there and died, but like, what am I getting for that? There's really no reward. So, so just try and do the right thing and count on those people behind me because Daenerys and Parminion, they're playing their roles just fine, right? So like after right, that chain of command, once more, after Brock Shield has all the aggro, next stay on Daenerys. You know, if you're if you're doing a two box like that, make sure you keep your aggro on your tank and then stay on your healer because 
that's the big advantage of choosing a mage or a warlock as your third in these situations is they're not a very um, click intensive class in terms of using rain or fire rain of fire excuse me um hellfire or especially in this case just pure frost blizzard spec and that can really add up to a lot of ease in terms of outputting dps because with an eight second channel as i mentioned in the previous video leveling per minion uh, that does add up quite a bit because it's just a lot of damage that's coming in without me having to input a lot i mean i can switch back to brock shield utilize my different seals to get just that much more room for error on the healing seal of light judge it seal of light utilize my sacred holy shield excuse me in order to mitigate that damage when it comes in consecration and then of course make sure that you know denarius is uh, outputting his heal and uh, you can feel good from there Nice to get a little extra green there. That Sprite Caster's Cape is a good uh, cloak pickup for any damage dealing classes, though. At this stage of Classic, you're probably all well versed in much better gear upgrades than, than Blackrock Deaths, but nevertheless, a good damage dealing cape. As we near the end of the run here, you'll see that uh, after this pull, I do turn into the arena event. Uh, I don't always run the arena. It's not particularly challenging. Um, you will see, or, or very lucrative in terms of the time, as you're not getting as many elite mobs, right? You have the non-elite to elite, as you'll see the transition in there. And actually, it can be a little troublesome, as the, uh, the one mob that I... Uh, have the most chance of dying to in any capacity uh, is actually the one I got. Um, I think it's Headrum the Spider. And the reason is because there, I think there's an aggro drop in uh, his or her uh, aggro table. So that is scary because what can happen is I can be caught out of position because the, the eye is moving away from me where I'm trying to firmly keep as the, t the aggro as the tank and Daenerys, like I mentioned, is not outfitted to tank in bear form, and Parnaminion is a cloth ring mage with, I think, like 3,000 health, maybe. So he is full glass cannon, full healer, full AoE tank. So it becomes difficult when they're asked to play outside of their role. Here we don't get anything exciting for the non-elites. Some of the uh, spitters, the snake-like spitters, they emerge from the tunnel. One thing to be commended with these mobs is that for non-elites, they have a big health pool. 
they really are able to withstand a lot of damage maybe just through a greater mass or whatever it may be but they can uh, take more hits so see the more the mana is a little low for the three characters and of course i won't say i was crossing my fingers but the one i mob i wanted to see least was headroom and uh of course that's what i got There's what I was afraid of in terms of as much fear as you can have just playing a video game. Is in this position I wasn't not actually sure because, you know, again, as a paladin, there's no way to taunt this mob back on you. And that can feel pretty sad as a pally tank. And one of the reasons I don't tank in raids or anything is because in situations like this, there's really nothing you can do. The mob has decided to go somewhere else. I mean, I, I actually start switching over to healing Daenerys and uh, dropping him into bear form. And you'll see here, I even end up having to throw a lay on hands on him because I really don't want anything to happen. And I'm gonna quickly try and finish it off with Parmenio on here and uh, I desperately try and heal myself because again, you don't want to get cocky. I'm about to die with Janir. So I start drinking and I realize like, wow, I'm not in a safe spot. So fortunately I get one tick of rejuve there and we are safe. So with that, the only things left to do are to zone out of the dungeon and go ahead and trade all the loot over to the bank alts that are waiting out there. So I'll log off to Nereus and hop over to one of my level 38 rogue tombs that uh, is outfitted with runecloth bags and trade over the inventory. Excuse me, I'm trading over to my dwarf priest Magathor. And it, you know, it goes on and on from there. So that's what a circuit of BRD looks like. You see, ironically, it's actually the frontline men here that remain unscathed. This looks like they uh, turned out all right. So as we move towards the end of the video, I want to go ahead and say thank you for watching. Light be with you all, and you know, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe as it greatly helps the channel. Light be with you all again. Take care, and thanks again.